Hey man, ECA here. Today I thought we'd go ahead and do a complete disassemble and a little bit of a slicking up of your, that's right, your Ruger GP100. You guys remember this one, the prior video we did. Beautiful gun. We were lucky enough to have somebody from the club who's here today with us, came back, decided to let us borrow his gun so we could slick it up a little bit. Um, let me show you, of course, as always, we are empty. It's the first rule of working with guns, making sure your gun's empty. You don't want to make sure uh, you don't shoot yourself in the foot and give the gun grabber something to gripe about. And you remember this guy, right? Our good old 686. Our baby's back. And today, we're going to do a little comparing and contrasting, and then we're going to jump right on into this guy. So we've got our scale here, and... First thing I wanted to do was weigh this guy, but we never got a chance to do it in the first video. Uh, I refer to you guys to our last video where we worked on the 686 here. Let's check this out here. So we are at 2.7 and 3 quarter ounce. And that's for the Smith. Some more info for you guys to take away here. 2.73 quarters. Holy cow. You can see the difference here in the top strap. How much thicker that is compared to the Smith's top strap. That was another thing you want to look at. Look at that compared. You can see that? Now the Smith's are usually, they consider them a little daintier. Whereas the Ruger's um, are a little bit more beefier. And I've had the unpleasant experience to be around two smiths as they blew up and when I mean when I say blew up I mean the top strap just kind of ruptured because the guys were using heavier than normal loads and I guess they were doing a double charge they got a double charge something like that I don't know but uh, yeah and uh, one thing I can tell you about smiths when they go off it's more like they'll break into two or three different pieces and you get two or three different chunks that kind of explode but with the GP100 with the Rugers, when they when they go, they tie in, they they, they kind of go like a like a hand grenade. There's just shrapnel everywhere. It just poof. So take that for what you will. <laughs> Something for you guys to think about. Just the uh, Rugers are built like tanks. Let's check out our trigger pull now, shall we? So we've got our trigger gauge. Now remember, this is in single action only. There's no way to gauge double action because the Trigger gauge here won't go that far. So, so we're going to try our trigger pull. We're going to measure our trigger pull. We're going to do best out of three. We'll do three and we'll average them together. Remember, double is single action only. That was 3.25. Three and a quarter was the first one. Three point two four. There we go. And three point one nine. So we'll call this a three point two. So we got 3.2 with the Smith. Now we'll try out Ruger here. So 3.2 for the Smith. Seven point one. That was the first. Let's try this again here. That was a 5.1. Let's try that one more time. So you figure solid six pound trigger and that's single action. 
So again, 6.1. So you're looking at a, you know, apples to apples comparison of what you got. Take that for what you want. Now remember, there is no way to lighten these up, the double action trigger, actually, because remember, the only thing you do is smooth it up. You can't really lighten any springs. The smooth up is good. Yeah, this guy feels really heavy. So we're going to lay him. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show you guys. Uh, the differences between the Ruger's and the Smith's, right? On your Smith's, let me show you what I was talking about earlier about when the Smith's tend to blow and you overpower. You see the cylinder here? Look where the cylinder notch is directly over the cylinder hole. See that? So you've got the weakest part of the cylinder, thinnest part of the cylinder, you've got the notch over it, right? That's in the Smith. That's how most, most Smiths do that. But now when you look at the Ruger, aha, something different here. Check this out. Ruger tends to put their notch off-centered. See that? Let's see if we can get closer. There you go. Do you see that? It's off-centered. So you've got more quote-unquote meat between the notch where it goes pretty deep and the off-centered. This is something to think about when you guys are, you know, looking around for these things. Something to think about. Just a little information there, tidbits. But again, everyone has their own preference when it comes to these guys. You know, the Rugers are awesome. Like I said, they're built like tanks. Let's get into it because we've got a lot to cover. Now, of course, you guys know uh, that this is the GP100. And the GP100 and the Ruger Super Black Hawks, or Super Red Hawks, excuse me, Super Red Hawks, the, dub, the double action, they're all basically about the same. So if you guys could get this one, you should have no problems doing the other models. So, uh, will, and another thing... Uh, the GP100s, they came down from the Security 6 and the Speed 6, which were the predecessors. And if I remember correctly, I think the, I want to say the Security 6 came out in 1971 to about 88, you know? Um, and let me see here. And the Red Hawk, uh, I think that one came out in 1977. That one's still in production. So the Red Hawk and this guy are still about the same, the internals are all the same. Uh, one more thing is that uh, then you got the GP101, which is just a smaller version of this guy. So again, if you can master this, you got three or four varieties of Ruger pistols that you should have no trouble whatsoever disassembling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our grips here. And we already made sure our gun is unloaded so get the grips out and on these guys these wood inserts will pop right out so usually you could put a, something in there to push out the other side and same over here now when you pop these guys out this is a takedown pin, which Ruger so conveniently places right here. You see that little hole right there? Little slot, that's where they put that tool. That tool will come in handy in the future. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Keep that aside because we're going to need that. So we've got the grips off. That's our takedown tool. And you're going to have one of these little bars right here. Now this is what keeps, and it only goes one way. So let's see. They only come out one way. There we go. This guy will pop out and that holds the rubber grip on. And there you go. Ah, he's naked. Look how small this thing looks. Look at that. Whew. Weird looking, huh? So again, this is what goes through. It only goes in one way. That's what holds on your grips. We'll put those to the side for the moment. We'll take that guy out. Now, just like your single action revolvers, You've got the coil spring right here, which controls the hammer. Hammer comes back, coil spring, back, 
just like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to compress the spring and that's where the tool comes in right here. A little piece of wire that they so conveniently put in there. Oh, this guy's dirty. I'm going to wipe this one down. You stick your disassembly right in there. See that? And then you let the hammer fall. And that's going to capture the spring. The spring should fall right out. And there's only one way to put this spring in. Okay? And if you look here, you see this? These little notches right here. They'll correspond to the notches on the frame right in there. They hook onto there. So when we disassemble, I'll show you. Now, to start, we can take this apart, and we've showed you guys how to take this before, uh, take these apart before. Uh, you need a vise, stick this in the vise, and you're going to take a pair of vise grips, pop this out, spring will come out, and what you want to do is sand the inside, or buff the inside of this right here. You can also buff this ball right here, and oh, uh, look what we got here, the Dremel, yeah, good old Dremel. You buff this part right here because this is the portion that rides inside the hammer. So you make this smooth, the action feels smoother. There you go. See? Two seconds. You make it shiny smooth. You take this off. We're not going to take this off because we already did it because the video is going to run really long. You take this off and you're going to buff the body of that all the way down both sides makes the screw writing over uh, makes the spring easier now here's the kicker you can take this off and you guys have seen how we thin these these uh, springs before uh, on our belt sander you just hit them don't ever cut your coils we don't like cutting coils on these big mainsprings because it lessens their inertia what you want to do is thin them and we make them thin thin this way instead of reducing coils but uh, Jack here doesn't want us to do that. So we're not going to go ahead and do it on this model. Okay? So keep him over there. Um, now you've got your... See? There's no tension on the back of the hammer. So what we're going to do is we pull the trigger. Right? As you pull the trigger, this piece right here... You see that? Right there? That'll pop right out. And that is what holds... The hammer in place. That'll come off. Keep your trigger depressed. Wow. Look at that. Your hammer just slides right out. Very nice, isn't it? And these are so easy. Remember on a, on a Smith, the whole side plate came out? Well, these guys don't do that. But that's okay because it's easy. Now, here's the sear. The sear face works just like a Smith. Basically, I think Ruger, Bill Ruger, stole Smith's idea. Shh, don't tell anybody. Because the designs are really, really similar. So, uh, another thing you can do right here at this point is you can pop this out. Let me see. You could take this out and be mindful where you put your stuff, your screws. The sear face right here, if you remember on our um, single action and our Smith & Wesson, you want to smooth that. And you can see right over here where it's got some wear so it's not even and that's from riding up and down on the what's called the sear dog or the sear leg on the uh, hammer on the back of the I'm sorry on the back of the trigger so we'll take this right here and we're going to smooth this out but barely remember don't change and do not change direction you use your fine india stone and we're just going to barely like so Barely touch it up. There you go. And you're going to see high spots. You see the high spots? Let's see if we can get that. There. See the high spots and the low spots? Don't worry about those. Okay. Remember the, the, the finish on here. The case hardening is just a couple thousands deep. You don't want to go through it. And all we're doing is smoothing up. So, again, we've got our sear here. And we're going to give it a little polish. And all this is is just a felt, soft felt, with a little bit of your favorite polish on there. I like um, Flitz. Flitz is great. So you see how nice and 
now that feels beautiful. Okay, we're going to come back. And if you look down into that hole, there's a spring in there. Oh, there he goes. You can see him right there. See that? Okay, so he's not going anywhere. What we're going to do is just clean up the leg right here. And Oh, look at this. I'll show you guys this one too. Let's put the sear back on. There you go. We'll push it back in. And just a little bit of patience. Line everything up. There we go. We're back in. You see? We are back in smooth as and good as new. Oh, look at this. Now that we got the uh, hammer in our hand, let's take a look at this. I'll show you something. If you guys ever heard of people putting shims, right, on their hammers, this is why. You see this right here? That's dragging on the inside. See that? There we go. That's drag right here. You see that? That's because as the trigger and, uh, and the hammer, they ride each other, there's always that little bit of wobble like this. You'll get a wibble wobble, and that's what causes these marks. Now you can go through... And you can take your stone, and you can take it, and using the flat portion, just rub it like that. And what you're going to do is smooth both sides perfectly flat. See? And you'll remove that. And then you want to go in, and you'd want to hit the inside of the frame right here with your file or something. Smooth it out. Hit it with your buffer. That's another area to look out for. So, something just to keep your eyes on. And you can even buff this right here. This is the pin where the, see that? Where that rides back and forth. Where the, the hammer rides back and forth. In fact, let's get some polish out. All right. And we'll put a little polish just a little bit. Whoop. We'll make put a little polish on our there and we'll give it a little bit of a buff. Just like on this side, you see there's nothing, no uh, drag marks or anything. So we're good to go. And this one, hopefully when we put it back in, it'll be okay. But again, I'd hit the inside with the file here. But he really doesn't want us to, to do that much filing. Basically what we're doing is disassembly and a little bit of a, just a little bit of a cleanup. So the more you guys could get that nice and, there you go. Nice and polished up, the smoother like glass it'll become, the easier, there we go, get a little rag here, the easier it is to pull that hammer, especially in double action mode. So, all right, got that going. Next thing we're going to focus on is removing the trigger guard here, because the trigger guard is where you're going to have all your internal parts, and that'll help us remove the cylinder. So, uh, one more thing we can go over is how to remove the front sight. You see that? Now the front sight, all you got to do is you take your punch, you push down right here, and the front sight will lift right out. That is what I think has a really distinct advantage. Look at that. Isn't that neat? And then the spring will come out if you want it to come out, but we really don't need it to come out. We'll just give it a quick wipe down here, clean up. If uh, you guys want to put some high-vis sights on here, that's certainly an option. That's one of the uh, really, really cool features, I think, about the Smith is, now you see why I have the sandbag. Push down the sights, and they push down your little pin, and the sights will just drop right in. Because there's a dovetail right there in the front, in the flat, in the back. Simple. See how fast that was? Really quick. You know, you're, you're shooting a competition, shooting on the field, want to swap out your sights, boom, 
you're done. Okay, next thing what we're going to do is we're going to remove True Guard here. And if you look on the inside, right there, there we go. And you see that little notch right there? Push that down. That'll pop this out, and this was going to come out levered like this, just like that. So I'm going to put it down here so I can get a good grip on it and give it. There we go. And you saw that. And now you see we've got our line between the frame. And this will just lift right off. And then be careful because it's a little tight since they've never taken this off. Set this aside for the moment. And you'll see right here how it goes on. Let me show you. You see that? This is spring loaded right here. All right. That'll slip right down here. You see there'll be drag marks on there. So if you want this to come out a little bit easier, you can come down here with a file, file this down if you're going to disassemble this a lot. Our buddy, he's not going to disassemble this a lot, so we're not going to even worry about that. But that's something else you can think of. That's just for ease of disassembly. Okay. Now you can take and eject cylinder. Cylinder slides out. And we'll set this aside and we'll work on this on a separate, just a little bit, and a little bit we'll work on that. Now, your frame is disassembled basically as far as you want to go. You can remove your cylinder stop right here if you want. There's a slide right under, a little hex right under there. You pull that out, then this guy will slide right out. I'm not going to do it because we really don't have the time to do that, but keep in mind. Another thing that they do is if you ever break, here's your firing pin. You see that? That's the firing pin back there. And you can see it from the front over here. Let's see if I can get this. You get the firing pin. Now, sometimes these break. Rarely do they break, but, you know, it's been known to happen. There's a spring in there right here. Uh, those are a pain to do and I'll show you why you see you they put that in and then they finish the gun so I don't know if you could see this here but right there there's the remnants of what look like a pin so you're gonna have to drive that out to pull this out and then when you put it back in you got to refinish this part so it looks like the gun that's something I think you should it's best left to the factory if possible just because that takes a lot of work I think it goes beyond what we can do. One more thing about the differences between the GP and the Smith, because remember there's a lot of stuff here, is the Smith gets locked in the back, their cylinder, and then they put this. That's a lock in the front. A uh, little bit of a cheesy lock, but you know what? It works, right? Now, you look at the Ruger, look at this. They've got a lock in the back, just like on the Smith. But, do you see this right here? This right here, that's another lock. That lock, right there. See that? Now that lock locks into, the cor locks into a corresponding slot right there on the frame. See where I'm pointing right here? Yeah, right there. So that's a pretty good idea. Really ingenious for, for Ruger to do that. And what that does is ensures secure lockup. So this thing is not going anywhere. Another reason people like, you know, these big heavy calibers. Remember, they make these like in, oh man, 454, Kassoul, and 460. So you're talking big guns, heavy recoil. Got to have that lock. But if you're just plinking around with 38s, 37s, really don't need to worry about it. All right. So your gun is completely disassembled. Well, except for the firing pin and the cylinder release latch and your rear and your front sight. But these things are, you know, we showed you how to do this. This guy's same same way to take this down is you take your screw on this side and you open that all the way up. You, you, you basically back that all up and then this thing is latched in there and you just push one side and it'll come right out and then you just undo that top screw and this will come out. But you really shouldn't have to do that. But like I said, it's your gun. You do what you want. Right, so let's give this guy a little bit of a wipe down here since we did take it apart. 
Let's see, am I missing anything here? All right, so he's ready to go. Next thing is where everything comes into play. This is your trigger group. Here, see that? This is your safety right here, okay? Now, your safety will come out by pushing the, pulling the trigger, and this will just come right out. See that? Now, this is your safety bar, tra safety transfer bar, excuse me, just like on your Smith. And the way this works is notch cut out over there in a hammer. When this comes up, <clears throat> this is the only way that, the, that the, the, the gun will fire. You see? It makes a flat platform right here that pushes against the firing pin, which shoots your gun, fires the shell. So, without this in place, there's a divot there. There's no way this will go off. That is an ingenious safety. You see? Let's go talk about the trigger group now. Now, you remember on a Smith, they had the trigger rebound spring. It was loose. Here, Ruger's captured it. Look at that. Pretty neat, huh? Nothing that we have to do for that. Right? Now, we've got the hand here, which you guys all know about the hand. Yeah, you see that? There's the hand. This is what indexes the cylinder, right? Yeah, pushes the cylinder up. That's the hand right there. Comes up and does that. So, let me show you how to take this apart. Looks complicated. You just got to be careful because there's two springs in here that will jump out. And you'll never find them again if you don't do it. One, if you don't do it correctly. One is the hand spring. And I'll show you where that is. It's right behind here. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull this. Let's see if I can show it to you. You pull this, and there it is right there hiding. You see at the, at the end of my pointer right there? That is a spring right there. So when we remove the hand, keep your finger over there so that doesn't pop out. I'm going to do that right now. Put your finger right here, and you wiggle that out. Oh, see? Popped out, but it bounced off against my belly. <laughs> I got lucky. Woo. All right. There it is. That's the little guy. And that puts pressure on the hand. So we're going to set him aside now. And in case you guys get confused, I always like to set them together. And you can see where on the hand it sat. Right back there. Where it put the pressure. Yeah, see? That's so the hand will return. Let's clean this up. And on the hand, again, you can... Let's do this. Tighten that. Let's put a little, a little bit of, and we're gonna hit this with the Dremel right around here, just a little bit. There we go, just like that, because that's what moves, and you want to make it smooth as silk, right? just smooth all sides of the hand because it rides up and down in that cylinder notch in the hand window you want to make sure that it doesn't get caught or anything so we do it down here give it a good wipe down that's the hand and we're going to put it right next to the plunger his own plunger right there so we don't lose him all right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out right here this is the bolt right there see that now the bolt will come out the same way you just pull it but remember there's a little plunger just like that one there's another one right back here so when you do this keep your finger right here as you pull it out you don't want it to shoot out I'll do it upside down there we go there there's the bolt and that little plunger is right in there He's saying peekaboo see peekaboo okay He'll come out now, very simple. You see this right here? We push, let me grab a, one of our thinner punches here. Grab that, push that out. That 
bolt, that uh, detent comes out. And whoop, this, this right here, cylinder stop activator, activates the cylinder. These two guys are buddies, remember that? Now you can pull the trigger out. And again, trigger has the return, trigger return spring right here, or trigger return bolt, however you want to call it. I don't look up the names. I call them whatever I call them, that, how I grew up knowing the names with. And you can see here we have a little bit of wear. Ah, not good. You might want to get a, a, a shim, and you could put a shim on this side, but our buddy has chosen not to, because we, we went through it already, and we talked to him what he could do or can't do. Since this is mainly a plinking gun, and we're just going to do a little bit, touching up on it but that's about it and if you look over here a little bit more wear right here a little bit wear right there see that let me get that there we go and again you could take the stone like we did in, in a prior video and you can lightly buff that if you want just like that see not a lot just like that and you'll make that smooth as silk same thing with the front part over here a little bit high spot you just don't want it to show there we go. What you don't want to do is you don't want to see it down here so it pops out of the, you know, out of the bottom over here. And you can see it and it'll look nasty. But just a little bit like that, you ain't going to be able to tell. Plus these parts are stainless. These are like the best things. These are the, one of the, the best ways that they could have made this gun. You know, just because. And we're going to polish this up. Now, this looks familiar, doesn't it? If you did your Smith, you see, like I said, these two guys right here, there's the full, the single, single action notch right there. You see how these two, when they come together right in here, you see how small that is? This is why we don't mess with it, because there's too great of a chance of this part getting rounded off and... You're going to have to order a whole new piece like this, but as far as I, as, as, that I know, Ruger doesn't give these out. You've got to send the whole gun back to Ruger, and they'll fit it for you. They don't sell parts online, unless you can find them used uh, secondhand somewhere. That's why you really don't want to mess with it. Now, here, you can see on your trigger, see that right there? You get those stretch marks on there, a little bit of scratch marks. You want to round... This this could be round like this, but remember the inside here has to be sharp. And when I say sharp, I mean sharp that it cuts your fingernail. Remember that we did? Let's see. Look, you see that? Cut my fingernail, which is what you want. This edge has to be a keen edge because this is the edge that touches the inside right there. You see the notch right there? I see if I get a close up of that for you guys. Right there. These two edges right here, and you can see how fine. That ledge is right there. This is a single action right there where it cocks. So this could be smoothed down, right? Because this comes up over when it cocks, comes up over this way, over the hammer. So you could take your Dremel, and but just the top. Just over the top. Look at that. Just like glass. Very nice. Remember, all these little things make up the hole. Oh, look. There's the trigger return notch. That fits in right in here. You see that? That's what rebounds the trigger. Pretty neat, huh? There. I don't know if you guys can see that there. Perfect. Now, don't forget, we still have our detent right here that's holding on, right? We could pop this guy out. There we go. Detent number two. This is the longer one. You see the difference? This is the one that goes for the bolt. That's the one that goes for the hand. So, if you guys get confused, you take the one for the bolt, put it right next to the bolt parts. See? 
you got your bolt parts, you got your hand. Now, this guy, uh, if you have a, t a timing issue with these guns, it's too much work to go into the, in one of these videos. The video would be another hour long. But it's too much uh, to go into how to hammer this out or remove some of the material here. So what I would advise is just send it into to Smith, or I'm sorry, to Ruger. And let them deal with it. Let them fix it for you. They got great customer service. You know, they'll do it for you. I think it'll work a lot better than you guys trying to do it yourself because it's just just a little too in-depth, okay? But what you can do is just polish these surfaces because that's what these two surfaces, this is the, here we go, cylinder stop activator, right? These two guys work together. Helps it pop it up and down. So you can take and just a little bit of uh, buffing right on the top here, on the sides. There you go. A little bit of buffing. We're not removing any material from these because it really, the, the design doesn't, this design on the Ruger does not lend itself very well for lightening anything. All we're doing is just slicking it up. Now if you look inside here, now we're going to hit the, the actual frame itself. Oh, one more thing. This detent right here is staked in. Do not try to remove that. All right, because that's just done at the factory, as is this one right here. The trigger return spring, which is in here. And this is the other one that holds your frame, the uh, this into the frame. See that? So don't worry about there. You can see there's a, you could take out right there, but I wouldn't do it. This thing has been at the factory done precisely. It's been ground in. It's been staked in. Don't even try to remove it. There's no reason to. This thing, unless you know you get some damage, then you can just order the whole part. It is a lot less of a headache to do that. All right. So uh, next thing, what I like to do is I'll run through here and hit these areas in here because these are the ones that the here I'll show you that the hammer runs in, right? Runs up and down against. So you'd want to take these and get these smooth if you can. Use a file, a little bit of a file to get in here, barely smooth them up, and then if you got a smaller, we're gonna have to go get one of these smaller. Uh, I'm gonna have to get one of my smaller buffing wheels on there. Well, I don't have a smaller buffer, but I do have my diamond file. I'm gonna go in here and just kind of run it nice and lightly, up and down. Make sure that everything is smooth. Remove the high spots. That way it could ride just a little bit smoother. Remember all these little things, they add up to the whole. All of these little things are some of the parts. So the more detail you guys play, you guys plan into these things, you put into them, the better your gun will run, smoother trigger pull you'll get, better shot you can be. And I don't know about you guys, but I need all the help I can get when it comes to shooting. You guys seen some of my shooting videos, right? <laughs> Polish this guy right here. Alright. Make sure we've got all the excess removed. Give it a good wipe down. And now we'll do the reassembly, right? What do you guys think? Let's do it. So, now that you got everything nice, buffed out, polished down, what we're gonna do, first thing I like to do, is I'm gonna put my bolt in, which goes right in there, see that? So the bolt will slip in, but remember, we need our bolt plunger and spring. That'll go right in there. And we got to slip our bolt in on that, or next to that. That means we're going to have to compress that spring right there. No problem. What we're going to do is compress the spring and push this guy down. I'm going to do down here, 
That way, if it launches into space, I don't lose it and have to buy a new spring. There we go. Easier than it seems. Voila, see? Spring, now we got spring tension back on our bolt. Very good. Second thing you want to do is you want to take your trigger and when we put the trigger back, this little stirrup has got to go right in there. See that? And then we got to line everything up and we got to put our cylinder stop activator, right? So I'm going to do this from this side, make sure the plunger gets in there. Okay. We're in. So now we're sitting in there. We got to line up, get our pin. We'll line up our pin here. And if you've got a punch, use your punch to help line up your pin. There we go. So our pin is lined up. Now we just drop in our bolt activator. And you see how this goes in? It looks like an alligator, right? You see that? Eye, um, mouth, nostril, hump on a nose. <laughs> I know it's cheesy, but it helps you to remember how to put it in. And the alligator goes in. There you go. I know, I know. Hey, you know what? If it helps, why not? Use your punch to help line up the activator. Oop, there you go. So, we got everything in here now. Right there, right? Cylinder stop activator. Trigger. Bolt with the plunger over there. We'll test it out. Oh, yeah. And you know what? It does seem smoother than it did. I'm telling you, a little bit of work. That grating is gone. I don't know if you can hear it. That's just the sound of the, the back of the trigger slapping the back of the trigger guard, but. Yeah, really nice. Smooth as silk. See? Our top, our beak over here, nice and smooth that we rounded off. Beautiful. And this is how. See how these guys work together? Just like that. It's just like a Ruger. Just like a Smith. See? Right there. You break the shot. Boom. Comes down. Resets. Rides over the sear. Alright. So. Let's get our hand in. Now the hand, remember, we've got our detent we got to put in the back right here. See that? There's our detent our hole right back there. And take that, put that back there. Now you got to hold this down, otherwise you'll smash your spring. And I'll show you what I mean. If you don't hold that down, see, oh, the springs get smashed. That's not good. You don't want to ding that up. So what you're going to have to do is do that. Put your hand in there, and use a punch. We're going to push that in. We're going to push the detent in as we push our hand down. So we're going to do this down here in case it decides to soar off into space, which is, this is kind of nice. You could hold it with this hand, with your pointer hand, you can push down, but, and then with this punch, you push it in. See? So let's do this and get another finger free here. You give a little bit more pressure. Oop. That's not good. Here we go. We want to make sure. Oh, it shot out. You see that? Let's put them back in. Come on. Go to your home. Cylinder spring. Hand spring. Go home. Are you too good for your home? But you guys don't know what movie that's from, huh? I'm showing my age, you know. 
Did it get in? Did it get in? Oh yeah, look at that. It's in. And you can see it. Go to your home cylinder spring. That handspring. You think you're too good for your home? So, we're back in business. Perfect. Okay. Our hands under tension. Oh, one more thing. You can hit the top of the hand if you want with uh, your stone. Just break that edge so it's nice and smooth. That's it. Just break that edge. You don't want to do anything else to it. So this guy is done. Well, after we got this whole thing ready to go, our cylinder has been put back together. We've got another video on that so you guys can take a look at that. Just because our video is going a little bit long, we want to pre reassemble everything. Easiest way to do that, right, is we take our cylinder and that will slide in. Right. Close it. It's not going to lock because remember your bolts down here. So we're going to take, we're going to drop bolt in. Oh, hold on. We almost forgot something. We forgot the safety here, right? Now, a lot of guys like to credit this idea, um, transfer safety bar to Bill Ruger, but there's a guy by the name of Oscar Mossberg who actually did it. See, it snaps right in just like that. See that? So yes, Oscar Mossberg did it. You could thank him, and I think Bill Ruger just borrowed the idea. So you guys can look it up. Now, put this back. You want to make sure this doesn't get in the way, your transfer safety bar. And you see a little notch right there on the end? You got a little divot. That'll sit into the frame right there, okay? And you can see right here the bottom of the cylinder. That's where it locks in. It gets locked in right in there. So put that in there. I'll look through the top. You can see transfer safety bars out of the way. I like to lay it down. Give it a nice firm. And then I like to push this, push the little divot in, and at the same time, give it a little bit of a knock. There we go. A little bit of a knock. Some of them are harder than others. There. Give it a tug. It shouldn't come out. Yeah, good. We're locked in. And there we go. We are back, right? Cycle. Look at that. We got the cycle going. Very nice. Now, We'll drop our hammer in, same thing, pull the trigger, hold the trigger down, get your hammer, put it in there, and you can let go of the trigger, line up the holes, right? Drop in your safety your trigger bolt right there. You're ready to go and spring you guys remember to sand all this down right get it all squared away nice and smooth this will sit right over here in that nub right there this sits in the pocket of the trigger right in there this thing is so simple compared to some of the single actions i've worked on it's not even funny <laughs> look at that nice huh and you could take Compress. Oh, there we go. We lost our divot and you are back. We'll measure and we'll see. Uh, I don't think we have any. We, did, we didn't really do any appreciable lightening to it. Uh, but we did make it a lot smoother. Really smooth. And it's just like glass. You know, that's just what you want basically is... Uh, you want to make the gun run reliably, but you don't want to, you know, make it heavy. So, we just put, replace your bolt over there. We got our grips back in. And that's it. You guys are done, man. 
Congratulations. He just put together, he disassembled, did a thorough cleaning, and he reassembled your Ruger GP100. Of course, it applies to certain versions of the Red Hawk. Check out our trigger pull here. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference since we did it in most of the stuff we did was for double action, but we'll see. We're at 5.13. Let's one more here. I like to do a couple. Five point one four and one for the road. Five point one one. So it looks like it did lighten the trigger up a hair. So like I said, it's just those little things that we did down in here in the uh, the trigger group, you know, just the buffing and a little bit of a polishing that really helps. Do I think you guys could do this at home? This is a no-brainer. If you guys could work on your car, change your oil, you can do this. This is nothing. Go back, review the video. The video is a little long. We did that on purpose. That way you guys can use it as a reference. Try it out. Um, all in all, I, I think I'll take the Smith because they're easier to work on. Uh, and they're easier to work on in the sense that you can make them lighter. You can lighten the trigger pull. Uh, you can smooth them up even better. The GP100 is just one of those guns that it is what it is. It's a self-defense weapon made to be carried. That way there's no negligent discharges because, you know, with that, that is a, that's an awesome pull right there in double action. But with these tips, you could hopefully make it a little bit smoother, a little bit more like glass to your liking. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, send them on over. Till next time.